All right, today I want to go over a point in one of my recent previous videos. I actually had a conversation with Johnny Candido, Candido Training HQ, last week. He happened to see my analysis of Greg Doucette's sumo deadlift technique, and Johnny had the audacity to disagree with my analysis. So today, I wage war against Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ. What's up guys, Alec Ankiri here, and I am just kidding. So, you can flip those dislikes back to likes now. Johnny and I actually had a very nice and productive conversation last week, and he said that he agrees with pretty much my entire analysis of Greg Doucette's sumo deadlifting technique, but there was one aspect that he completely disagrees with, and that was regarding the transition that takes place over the knees during a sumo deadlift. See, in my original analysis, I lauded Greg for his ability to keep the bar ultra snug during the transition, never once losing contact with the legs on the way up. And I showed examples of other elite competitive lifters as a comparison just to demonstrate how efficient that Greg's technique was in this regard, to highlight that most people, even world-class sumo deadlifters, can't keep the bar that snug, as snug as Greg does during the transition. And one of those examples happened to be Johnny. And frankly, I don't know that I've ever seen such a snug transition before during a sumo deadlift as what Coach Greg demonstrates here. The bar appears to stay in contact with his shins and thighs literally the entire way through the lift, not just off the floor and up the shins and then again making recontact at the lockout, but it also maintains contact while the bar is transitioning over the knees and that's actually really a pretty rare thing. It's really difficult to maintain constant contact like that 100% of the time during a deadlift and especially during the transitional portion of the lift. Even other super proficient technical masters, people who I would consider technical masters of the sumo deadlift, such as for example Johnny Candido and Yuri Belkin, do not exhibit such a degree of bar to body snugness during the transitional phase. You can observe during both of their lifts here that the bar ends up the tiniest bit forward during the transition and and then gets reeled back in for the lockout. But Coach Greg does not exhibit this minor bar path inefficiency. But as it turns out, I was missing a pretty important piece of context here. And I was wrong in my analysis of this particular aspect. And Johnny is pretty well a master of the sumo denim. So I will simply defer to him in this context. I yeah, saw your uh, Greg Doucette sumo form video because I saw it on Greg's channel itself. And the knee lockout thing is the one point that I completely disagree with because what you said about him having soft knees is exactly why uh, competitive lifters lock their knees first. Because if you keep the bar really close, if you use straps, you can keep it closer because the underhand doesn't pass through, but it still results in soft knees. And like you mentioned in the video that he's the only person you've seen do that, that's why. Because <laughs> it is literally, I actually literally unlearned that style. So in my opinion, that is one part that I think is objectively wrong as far as it being more efficient. Because what you do is you move your legs out of the way so that then you can keep the bar close. Because otherwise it's literally your hands pass through your thighs and your hands plus your thighs push the bar forward if you lock out late. Which is why some people have soft knees like him. I agree that it's not glute caused, but it is caused because you're making room essentially for the bar to be in front of your thighs. So basically what he's saying is that these guys are doing it on purpose. They're essentially letting the bar come away on purpose. They lock their knees literally the moment that they're able to do so because this makes room for the hands to cross over the thighs unimpeded, which can be a problem during the sumo deadlift, specifically the underhand when you're using a mixed grip, which has a tendency to get in the way and can actually obstruct the path of the bar. But according to Johnny, if you lock the knees as soon as the bar is clear of them, then what you're doing essentially is freeing up space. You're moving the legs out of the way, which means that the bar can continue to travel upward vertically rather than having to be nudged 
forward. So it's less that the lifter is losing contact with the bar due to bar pack inefficiencies and more so that the lifter is deliberately moving themselves away from the bar so that the bar path can remain as efficient as possible. And then at this point, once the bar has cleared the knees and the knees are locked, but the hips still remain unlocked, the shoulders can then be smoothly pulled back as the hips come forward. Whereas on the flip side, if the knees are locked out late, it can actually be incredibly difficult to keep the bar reeled in position. As well, it can be nearly impossible to eventually get the knees actually locked out, which can result in a soft knee lockout, which would result in red lights in a powerlifting competition. Now, Coach Greg was able to circumvent this issue in part because he was using straps. So there was no supinated hand. There was no underhand present to cause him clearance problems over the knees, even though he maintained soft knees during his lift. In our conversation, Johnny even went so far as to say that this early knee lockout, which causes the appearance of separation in the lifter barbell system, is actually now a universally or nearly universally accepted sumo deadlifting technique at this point in powerlifting circles. And Johnny is quite a bit more entrenched in powerlifting these days than I am. I haven't kept quite as close of an eye on things these last few years as he has. He's still competitive and he's still very close in those circles. And I also haven't done a sumo deadlift myself in a couple years either, although I might have to make another run at a sumo cycle again after that conversation that we had. But part of what I was basing my original analysis off of was my own experience with sumo deadlifting, where I would pretty much in my case accidentally, or I thought it was accidentally, or maybe it was intuitively, however you want to view it, but I would accidentally lock my knees out early as soon as the bar had cleared them, like Johnny's talking about here. And at the time, I viewed that as a bad thing because that separation from me and the barbell would occasionally cause me to lose my balance. The bar would then drift after I got thrown off balance. It would drift, I would get pulled forward, and I would have to let an otherwise easy lift go. Now, little did I know at the time, that this was actually a technique born out of necessity. And you can see that here in my 585 pound sumo deadlift. My knees lock out as soon as the bar is clear, just like Johnny describes. But in this instance, I'm able to keep everything perfectly balanced and pull my shoulders back to a smooth and easy lockout. And how this all ultimately looks is gonna vary based on the individual. Stance width, grip width, and anthropometry are all going to play a role in how the final product looks. But the concept is universally accepted at this point. So I just thought that, that was a pretty cool tip from Johnny and I wanted to clear up that one error because I don't want to be responsible for spreading incorrect information. So I want to thank Johnny for messaging me and for clearing that up. And if I missed anything that you think is important here, Johnny, feel free to chime in in the comments. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. Please be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. And if you're interested in online coaching, be sure to shoot me an email at oncurie.elite at gmail.com and I'd be happy to pass some more information your way. Or simply visit my website, www.oncurieelitefitness.com for more details. Keep training hard and I'll catch you guys next time.